Hello again, and welcome back to another FMod and Unity tutorial. Today we're going to be using snapshots for the first time on this channel, uh, and we are going to be using them to create a slow motion effect, similarly to how uh, the Max Payne games have their bullet time, uh, where the game slows down to give the player time to shoot stuff. Uh, the audio does as well. Uh, it slows down, it drops in pitch, and that's what we're going to recreate with our snapshots. Uh, cool. So let's jump straight into it. Now, to do the effect the, uh, the way I'm going to do it, you are going to need the latest version of FMOD, uh, which at the moment is version 1.10.00. Uh, and that's just because with this version, uh, they've added actually added a feature to the mixers where you can you can change the pitch of all the audio that's routed to a single bus, which is really helpful, especially in this case, because this is what we're going to be using to slow everything down and drop the pitch with all in one, okay? So make sure you at least have this version of FML to do this, okay? Cool. So the first thing we're going to want to do for this is jump into our mixer, uh, and I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about snapshots, as you can see here. Uh, in the top left, I've got the snapshot tab, and I've already created a couple snapshots here. Um, so if you ever want to create your own, what you want to do is right-click here, go New Snapshot, and then choose either New Overriding or New Blending. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about the difference between these two, as I'm only going to be using the overriding snapshot. However, I'll quickly sum up the difference. Basically, the overriding snapshot basically does just that. It will take any of your settings on your buses, oh, whoops, I didn't mean to mute that, any of your settings on your buses, uh, or any uh, effects you've added, uh, and it will override the settings of them. So say for example, uh, let's click on one of these actually. Let's say for example, I wanted to drop the uh, music bus in volume by 10 decibels. Uh, we just basically click on the fader and drop it down by 10. So now when this snapshot is activated in the game, it will do just that. It will drop this bus by 10 decibels. Now what a uh, blending snapshot does is the same thing for all of these, any of your effect dials. Uh, it will just override your previous snapshot or just the standard settings and change them. However, with the faders, it will actually add the difference. Um, so, for example, let's say I triggered uh, a snapshot that did it, it, this. It dropped the fader of my music bus by 10 decibels. If I then uh, created a, another snapshot, a blending snapshot, and I pulled the fader down to minus 15 decibels, and then that was triggered after my first snapshot, which was set to minus 10, Instead of just pulling the, instead of changing the faders position, position from minus 10 to minus 15, like an overriding snapshot would, it would add the difference. So your fader would eventually end up at minus 25, because obviously add minus 10 and minus 15 together, that's what you get. Okay, so that's the main difference between the two, uh, is that when it comes to fading, the blending snapshots... Um, add the difference as opposed to just override the settings. Uh, if you want to find out more about uh, the differences between the two, I'll throw a link in the description to a page that has uh, a bit more description um, on how they work together. Uh, but hopefully that gives you a brief understanding of it. Uh, so what we need to do for this is actually look at our snapshots I've already created. As you can see, I've got two overriding snapshots. Uh, and basically talk about what they do. Uh, because these two are going to be doing the same thing they're both going to be creating that slow motion effect i talked about uh but the reason why i've got two is because i'm going to talk you guys through two different ways of implementing these snapshots uh, and there is actually a third way uh which i'll talk about in a sec uh so the first one is using the fmod studio event emitter uh similarly to how we can use that to trigger events we can use that to trigger snapshots essentially and uh, apparently there's a helicopter flying over by <laughs> it's just perfect timing so we're just going to have to deal with that. Uh, so anyway, you can either trigger an event or a snapshot with a, uh, with a, I forgot the name of it, the studio event emitter, right? Uh, so that's basically what I've set this one up for. Uh, this second one is going to be triggered with a script. I'm going to do some coding and stuff, some real simple stuff that we've talked about before on this channel. Uh, and the third way of imp implementing snapshots is by adding the snapshot itself to uh, an event in FMOD. If I could quickly go back to the event editor, what we could do is drag one of our uh, snapshots into one of our events in the event editor. Maybe we want to drop it into the timeline or into a new parameter if we wanted to create one of them and trigger that with an event. So say for example, we had you know a parameter, just, I don't know, set between zero or one. 
we can set it so that when uh, the parameter hits 0 0.5, the snapshot triggers, you know, something like that. Uh, but, but the reason why I'm not going to talk about that too much, or demonstrate it rather, is because uh, if you go to the FMOD TV channel, uh, you'll actually find that they've just basically covered all that. They've done a perfect video on it. And obviously, they're the FMOD guys, so they know their stuff. So you should go check that out if you want to know how you can trigger snapshots with uh, events. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do it the other two ways I've just talked about. So let's jump back into our mixer. And let's actually talk about how we create that slow motion effect. So let's start with my bullet time uh, emitter snapshot. Uh, so what I did is I basically, uh, I, pers I because I use this in a different video, uh, these four buses I've created here, I've routed them into this custom master bus I made. I know we have another one here, but at the time, this was the easiest. This kind of helped. <laughs> so I made my own master bus. And uh, what I've done here, as you can see, is I've taken the, the pitch of that master bus, which can, we can find in the group macros. Uh, macros, macros, it's macros, yeah, macros. <laughs> uh, and I've dropped the pitch by 12 semitones. Uh, and this is what I was talking about earlier, where you need the latest version of FMOD, because this is the new feature, or one of the new features, obviously. Uh, yeah, so whenever this uh, snapshot is triggered, this is going to happen. The pitch is going to drop by 12 semitones, right? Simple enough. Uh, so let's actually have a look and see how that works. What I've done is I've created my own little trigger box. Uh, for my player to walk into uh, and as you can see I've got my studio event emitter here attached to it so when the player enters and exits the snapshot uh, will be activated or turned off turn on or off if I click the little search tab here you can see here's all our events and all our folders for our events but here's our snapshot so it's just as easy as clicking on the snapshot you want to use okay cool so let's run the scene and let's see what that sounds like There we go. Cool. So as you can see, when I went to the the, uh, the trigger box, the pitch dropped uh, and the sound sort of stretched out a bit, which is what we want. Uh, great. So let's have a look at the other method we can do. If I go back to FMOD Studio, let's jump into bullet time script. Now, what you probably noticed with the last one is that where we walked in and out of the trigger box, the snapshot just turned on instantly. You know, there wasn't a sort of uh, change from the normal speed of the audio to the new speed of the audio. Uh, it was just instant, it was instant, wasn't it? Uh, but the way we could change that is the same way we can change that with our events. We can use uh, the seek speed option once we uh, control it with a parameter. Okay? So as you can see, uh, I'm on the same bus here. Uh, I've got my pitch, I've dropped down even more this time, which I'll explain why I've done that in a bit. Uh, but I've also got this menu here, this little parameter I've made myself. And the way we I got that up is by right-clicking Intensity uh, and clicking Add Automation, even though that says Remove. It will change once you've obviously added it. So once you've added all your automation, you can edit it how you want. We can then do is click this little arrow, and it will bring up a menu where you can see all your parameters. And I've just called this one Snapshot Intensity, which in hindsight probably wasn't the best name for a parameter considering that's the snapshot intensity but hopefully that isn't too confusing but as you can see we can now access the seek speed of that parameter right uh cool so i've obviously set my seek speed to one second so that when it changes from when the parameter changes uh from a, a whole unit or one because i've only limited it to zero to one uh you it will change within a second so yeah uh, cool. So the way we do that is if I click on, I think it's right click here, and you can edit the parameter. So I think by default, you probably see it as 0 to 100. I've just changed mine to 0 to 1, which again, I'll explain why I've that, done that in a bit. Cool. So the way I've set it up is that when the snapshot intensity parameter is at 1, the intensity of the snapshot is 0. I know, I, this is where it gets confusing. I'm an idiot for calling it this. Uh, and then when I drop this parameter down to 0, the intensity rises to 100 so when it's zero it's on when it's one it's off okay now let's jump into unity again and i'll explain why i've done it that way uh if i find where did i put the script so if i go to my game manager i've got this script here slow motion effect so if i click edit let's jump into that okay so 
basically the way I've done this is that I want to slow the time of the game down as well. And we kind of touched this in the uh, pause menu video I did not too long ago. Uh, it's a really simple way of just slowing the game down. When the game, basically this line here, time dot time scale, is what I used to slow the game down. Now when that's set to 1, the game's running at normal speed, right? However, I can drop that down to say 0 0.5, which is what I've done. And then the game speed drops to half its regular speed. Uh, which is why if I jump back into F mod, I've set these parameters up backwards. Because obviously, when because I'm going to be using the same values to control this parameter, just for making it eat, you know, the sake of making it easy for myself. I want this parameter to be on one as soon as it starts, which by the way, if you want to do that, you right click it and click set as initial value. So it'll do that as soon as the game starts. So it's going to start at one uh, and the intensity will be zero. So uh, obviously I want the intensity to be zero because that means the snapshot's off, but I want the parameter to be at one because that means the game is running at its regular speed. And then obviously when it drops, I want them to reverse, okay? Because then I want once the value of the speed of the game decreases, I want the intensity to kick in, right? So that's the reason why I've set it up that way. Let's jump back into the script. Uh, as you can see, a lot of stuff we've done before. I just basically called an event instance and a parameter instance. Uh, I, with the event instance, I've done it how we usually do. I've just typed in fmodunity.runtimemanager.createInstance on the void awake function. Uh, and as you can see here, instead of typing in event colon forward slash, God, it's really noisy out there today, it's a bit distracting. <laughs> instead of writing event, I just put snapshot because that's what I'm trying to call. And obviously the exact name of my snapshot. Uh, and for the parameter, I've called it snapshot intensity. So just quote the name of my parameter. And the parameter I've uh, called I and the uh, instance I've called BT for bullet time and uh, intensity. Uh, and I've just told the snapshot to start straight away or the instance to start straight away because obviously I want this to be, I want it to start straight away, but obviously I don't want that parameter, where is it, if I go back to that, I don't want this parameter to have the intensity on 100%. So it's start, the, the snapshot starts, but because my parameter is on one and the intensity is zero, you don't hear any change, which is what we want. Uh, then if we go to the update function, this is really the meat and potatoes of the whole, <laughs> the whole operation. As you can see, I've created this float variable called game speed. Uh, and this is kind of what controls the value of the 1 or the 0 0.5 for the, the speed of the game. So uh, I've set my parameter, this, the value of my parameter to that game speed float. And I've done the same thing with the time .time scale. I've set the value of it to the game speed. And then I've just said, if input.get key key code Q, so whenever I press the Q button or hold the Q button down, uh, whenever that's pressed, we want the game speed to equal 0 0.5. So the speed of the game is going to drop to 0 0.5, the parameter is going to drop to 0 0.5, meaning that my intensity is going to increase. Uh, but also, I because where I've dropped the pitch to uh, minus 24 semitones, uh, as opposed to the... 12 semitones that I did in the last uh, snapshot. Uh, because it's only dropping to 0 0.5, uh, the pitch will only drop to minus 12. So I'm still only dropping it by an octave. Uh, and again, because I've linked the parameter up to the speed of the game, I don't want the parameter to drop to zero because that means the speed of the game will drop to zero and then we're basically not moving. That's not what we want. We don't want those games to just stop. We want the games to just to slow down, okay? Uh, by the way, you don't have to link this parameter to the same speed as your game. You can control, control them independently. Uh, it's just for the sake of time and ease and simplicity that I did it my way. You know, you can make your own, um, you can make a separate float variable or any variable that controls the parameter i uh, for your game speed uh, and control create another float variable that controls the actual, sorry, let me try and say that again. You could create one float variable that controls the parameter of your fmod snapshot and a separate one that controls the speed of the game. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> if that's easier for you, depending on you know what you've got going on in your code and stuff. Uh, but anyway, so when the button Q is pressed or held down, the game speed will drop to 0 0.5. When it's released, it will return back to 1, okay? So very, very simple stuff. Uh, as always, by the way, if you want to copy this script, uh, I'm going to stick it on my um, Scott Scripts page, which you can find within uh, a link in the description. Uh, so say you're typing this out yourself, you can just copy and paste it and then work your way around it from there. Cool. So let's jump into Unity and let's see the final result. I'm going to hold Q down and see what happens.
got a bit carried away at the end. I just started spamming the Q button to see what happened. But there you go. You get this sort of idea. So the game slows down and so does the audio. Because we're dropping the pitch of the audio, uh, what we're essentially doing is stretching out the uh, distance between each of the waves, uh, which makes it longer in duration as well as drops the pitch down. Cool. So I think that's everything for this video. Uh, as I said earlier, the links to the description on the differences between the snapshots, the video on the FMOD channel where they explain another way of implementing snapshots, uh, and a link for the uh, script I used in this video. They'll all be in the description, so go check them out if you want to you know, learn more about this. Uh, and I think that's everything to cover. Oh my god, there's, I feel like there's just motorways that have just been built outside my house. It's so noisy today. <laughs> but there we go. I'm pretty sure that's everything we need to talk about. So as always, let me know in the comments if there's anything in particular you want to see from these videos. Uh, any ideas are always appreciated. Uh, and yeah, that's everything. So I've been Henry Scott and thanks for watching.